In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to import PowerPoint slides into Articulate Storyline 360. Now, importing content you already have in PowerPoint is a huge time saver. You don't need to recreate your slides from scratch to leverage all the great features in Storyline 360. So in this tutorial, we'll import a few PowerPoint slides from a previous Articulate Studio project. And then we'll make some common updates to quickly transform the slides into interactive slides. So if you're following along, go ahead and open up the practice activities, the Venture Tech PowerPoint. And let's just take a quick look at what we're going to work with here. All right, so this is the original PowerPoint slide. Just want to walk through a few things here in the file, and then we can also compare it to Storyline after we've imported it. And you can see how all the fonts and themes and colors will come over into Storyline. So overall, it's just a simple four slide presentation. And this first slide actually links out to each of the uh, other three slides. So this first screen is like a menu screen where the first button is going to link to slide two. The second button on services links to slide three. And technology links to slide four. And I also can verify this by clicking the button here for our team, control K, and you can see it brings up a hyperlink for that slide or for that object. Same thing for services and technology. And if you look down in the notes section for the first slide and second slide, you'll see that there are some notes here. Okay, and finally, let's take a look at the PowerPoint slide masters. So go up to view and slide master. Okay, so you can see in here that we have a customized slide master, right? We're beginning with the, uh, the main slide, we have a background image that has a nice uh, brown tint to it. And then a little farther down, we have some custom slide layouts with different colors, one for each of the uh, topics on the menu screen. Let's go ahead and import this into Storyline 360 and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm starting out in Storyline with just a blank project. And so we want to insert that PowerPoint file to customize or build additional slides for an e-learning project. And so to get the PowerPoint into Storyline, we need to import it. And we do that by going up to Slides, Import, Import PowerPoint. Now, if you're following along, you have a PowerPoint folder inside of your Assets folder. Go ahead and open that and navigate to Venture Tech and click Open. Now, the first thing you'll see are the four slides that were part of that Venture Tech PowerPoint. So you can see them in a thumbnail view to kind of get an idea of what they look like. And so you can choose to import all of them. You can see a little blue highlight box around each one, or you can deselect them one by one by clicking them. Or up here on the right, you can choose none, and it just disables all selections. And if you just wanted to bring in one, go ahead and click it. For this example, we want to bring all of these in. So we're going to select all. And you can see down here, we're going to import these into a new scene, and then we're going to use the name of the PowerPoint file, Venture Tech. You have a few options here if you want to import them into the current scene. And of course, you could give them a new name. We'll just, we'll just leave the defaults here for now. So go ahead and click Import. Okay, so here's the imported PowerPoint. Now, one of the first things to notice is that the hyperlinks that were on this first slide, right, that we're linking out, are actually now represented in Storyline as a branching interaction, which really represents how those were linked in PowerPoint, but because PowerPoint is linear, you don't see that flow. We actually get a better view of how these slides are related with this uh, branching view. Let's go ahead and drill down into the first slide, so double-click the slides thumbnail. So here's the slide in slide view, which is obviously very familiar in PowerPoint, but if I pull up my timeline, you can see that every object on that PowerPoint slide has been brought in and placed on its own layer. So you now have access to the individual text as well as the shapes and of course the uh, any other graphics that, are, that were placed on the uh, on the slide. So not only the on the slide but everything is completely editable, right? We can edit the text, we can change the, the colors here for any of the graphics. We have to completely have access to those native PowerPoint shapes. They're now native vector storyline shapes. And if we jump over to the notes panel, we can see that the text for the notes has also come over. So we now have the transcript or the narration notes for the slide already for us here in the notes tab and storyline. So let's go ahead and check out the slide master by going up to view and slide master. Now up top, we see our default uh, slide master. That's because we started with a new project and this is that clean theme that's part of the default uh, slide. But if I scroll down, check this out. This is the same slide master we just saw in PowerPoint, right? We have the, the custom image here for the background, the tint on it, and then we also have the individual layouts here for each of the, uh, the chapter or module slides in that PowerPoint. 
So let's take a look back now on the main slide and look at those hyperlinks that we looked at in PowerPoint. Let's see what Storyline did with those. So close the master view, and let's just select this first one for our team. Okay, so we don't have hyperlinks in Storyline, but we do have triggers. And if you look over here on the right side in the triggers panel, you can see that each of those hyperlinks has been converted to a jump to slide trigger, right? So the our team is going to slide 2.2 our team. The services is jumping over to the services slide and technology is going to the technology slide. So all those hyperlinks are recognized in Storyline. That's why you see this branching effect, right? Because this first slide has three separate links to three different slides, which is why you see this horizontal relationship branching out of this initial slide. That's where each of those hyperlinks is going. They're just now in the form of triggers. Now, when you first import your PowerPoint into Storyline, you may have to do a little bit of tweaking. Sometimes it's text, sometimes it's the uh, way the slides move from one to the other. So let me show you what that looks like. If I come down here to the 2.2, our services slide, and we look over here in the triggers panel, we see we have two triggers down here for the player, right? We're jumping to the next slide or to the previous slide, and those are the player. But also there's a slide trigger up here that's automatically moving the slide to the next slide when the timeline ends. So in this case, the slide is five seconds long. So the slide's not going to wait or pause when it reaches the end of the timeline for the learner to make a decision. It's gonna immediately jump to the next slide. So here, you may need to change these timeline triggers or just delete them. Now, if that's the case, if you don't want this to be a self-running presentation, you don't have to go through every slide manually and then remove the trigger. You can actually come back over here to Story View, and I'm going to select all the slides. So I'm just going to do a Control A, and you can see how Control A will select all the slides within the scene. I come down here to Slide Properties, check out this first option. Slide Advances, right now it's set to Automatically. We can change this to By User, and it's going to get rid of a bunch of triggers. And now when I jump back into the IR Team slide, you can see we only have the player triggers where it's now just waiting for the learner to make a decision. So another consideration when you're working with imported PowerPoint files is just the overall feel of the interactivity. Let's just preview this first scene and take a look. So one of the things in PowerPoint when you built e-learning was you didn't get that visual feedback for uh, scene rollovers and hover states and visited states, right? You just saw the cursor change indicate something might be clickable, but you really didn't get that rich feeling of interactivity. So I, I can see that my cursor changes here over our team, and if I click, I'm going to you know, jump to that slide, but there really isn't a lot of interactivity or visual feedback that indicates that there's other objects in here that I can interact with. And that's really where Storyline shines, right, with interactive capabilities. Let's go back to our slide and look at a few things we can do to quickly transform this into something more interactive. So go ahead and close the preview and return to slide view. And if I click this first button for our team to select it, I can come down here to states. And you can see that we now have some options for just adding some visual cues to these buttons to make them feel and look a little bit more like buttons. So one thing to do would just be to add a hover state to those buttons to make them look and behave more like buttons. So click the edit states, and then we can create a new state right here. And hover is a built-in state, which means it has some built-in properties that automatically will change the uh, states for you. You don't need a trigger for it. So state name hover, and we can just change the color to something uh, a little different here to give some feedback. Maybe just make it a little bit darker and click done editing states. All right, let's just go ahead and preview the slide real quick. So go up to preview, preview the slide. All right, now you can see that we have a simple interactive button that provides a little more visual feedback to the learner. All right, so you can see the import process for PowerPoint is really simple and straightforward. There may be a few things each time that you need to just double check or verify after you import them, right? The navigation, for example, may have it set to auto advance. And there's also the idea that maybe the jumping to a new slide every time could actually be consolidated into slide layers. But overall, it respects all the design themes, the colors, the fonts. And it's a really great way to quickly leverage what you have in PowerPoint or Articulate Studio courses.